Yo, what's up guys? Corey Sandman, Sandhagen here. Welcome to the channel. Today, my fight of the night at UFC 298 was this fight, Robert Whitaker versus Paula Costa. Robert Whitaker was an absolute pleasure to watch live. I feel super honored to even just witness one of his performances. Been around since 2012. Love the guy, love his personality, love his fighting. Let's get into what he does so awesome. All right, first things first, let's talk about the absolute cannon of a hook kick that Rob Whitaker ate, and thank God that it was 10 seconds before the round ended, or else I think that that would have been the fight. Fucking big time kudos to Rob Whitaker for being able to fight 10 more minutes after taking a shot like that. But first thing, let's talk about just how to defend these wheel kicks, okay? Uh, you warmed up, your leg's good? Good. <laughs> okay, uh, throw it, let's see, let's see. Okay, so, yeah, you're warm. All right, so, when people are throwing these, you have two options. You can be too far away, or you can be too close. There aren't really that many other great options for blocking a wheel kick, okay? When Elias goes to throw his wheel kick, if I take it, even on the hand, it's going to suck, okay? Especially in the MMA glove because there's not enough padding to cover your entire everything that you need to have covered. Like when I knocked Marlon Marais out with a wheel kick, it like glimpsed off of his head, okay? You have to cover everything when you get hit with like a freaking like mallet of a wheel kick, especially someone that looks like Paul Costa who's like on all kinds of secret juice that we all don't know about. But he goes to throw his wheel kick, okay? If I stay, odds are maybe I don't get knocked out, but some, it's really, really not fun. If I see the wheel kick and I block like how the kickboxers sometimes do, like the fancy kickboxers, like Fazeev will lean real hard, or if I want to stay more positional, I can just step myself out of the way, but you have to address this with space, okay? Go ahead. I either get all the way out of the way or I can also close space enough to where I can be so close where that heel, which is a super like bony part of your body, doesn't get to hit me in my face or in my glove or anywhere, okay? That's how you defend wheel kicks. The problem with getting too close though is if you misread this and they throw a hook kick or a kick to the body, a spin kick to the body instead of a wheel kick, like, ugh. Really, really not a good day to eat those on the ribs. That like even hurts me just like thinking about that. <laughs> Someone throwing one of those really hard. But uh, yeah, so that's how you deal with the wheel kick. Get all the way out of the way or get really close. Don't try to block it, in my opinion. Okay, if you are going to try to block it, like really cover your entire face, not just like how you would for like a normal round kick, you know? Cover your entire face, hunker, get like really, really protected because you're about to get hit by a car. Okay, the other really cool thing that happened in this fight, and this was, uh, like, this was my absolute fight of the night, in my opinion. Like, Rob Whitaker is such a good fighter. I just, I like, can't even believe it. I think the guy's been in the UFC for, since, like, 2012 or something. So, a ton of experience, a ton of, like, really just good fighting, knowledgeable shit going on in that fight. I loved it. One of the main things that we'll talk about with Whitaker that he does super, super good is... When he does go to throw any punches, he does not load. Like I've talked about this all of the time because I see it so often at all of these shows that I go to and even including myself. When there's a load to things that you're doing, even if it's tiny, it matters. If I go to throw my right hand and it goes like this first and I punch or it goes like this first and I punch opposed to just from my face or I guess from my foot, through my body, from my face, onto my target. That's how Rob Whitaker punches. That's how uh, Jack Hermanson punches. That's how guys with a really good jab go to punch. They don't like cock this thing and then throw their punch. It's just boom. From A to B. It's amazing. It's beautiful. It's like a... It's a skill in its own that not everyone has. I kind of have an issue sometimes like loading or I used to have an issue loading a lot. Um, and I know that it's a really tricky thing for some of you guys to deal with. So 
Whitaker doesn't do that. He trusts his power. That's a big piece in not feeling like you have to load because a lot of that is just like you thinking that you have to compensate so that you can really crack. But when Whitaker does it, it's just uh, specifically he was doing it off of a lot of jabs. He was slipping to the inside of the jab, which is a great idea, and then firing really tight unloaded punches. Switch your stance so that the camera can see. But he throws his jab. Whitaker would slip to the inside, okay? His hands are here. It's not a giant slip to the inside like this, okay? That's cool, that looks really cool in slow motion. You might get a highlight knockout or you might just whiff it and then get knocked the fuck out yourself. Don't do the second one, okay? When we're here, Whitaker slips to the inside. It's straight A to B and then he follows up with the same type of punches. I think it's super impressive when guys can punch inside of people's guards. It's like, to me, one of the most beautiful pieces of striking. And what I mean by that is if Elias is covered and I know that he wants to throw punches that are going to kind of open up a little bit like this and I can punch on the inside of these things here. I think that that is like some of the most beautiful, like well-threaded shots that you can throw, and Rob Whitaker's a master at it. Rob would slip to the inside, or he wouldn't even slip to the inside. He would just go, uh, just stay guarded. Uh, he would just go on the inside of Costa's uh, guard here. It doesn't give him an option to throw punches back when you punch on the inside. They can throw on the outside of my punches, but I'm almost always, if you throw this hook, I'm almost always going to beat that shot if I'm the guy on the inside. And I'm also the way more protected guy because I have my shoulder here to like deflect stuff or like bail out and really like use it kind of like a Philly shell there. But Rob Whitaker would be here, boom, land these shots on the inside, super beautiful, not loaded, nothing like that. He particularly did it a ton of times off of the lead jab, slips to the inside, which is the less safe side, but the much faster side. So what I mean by that, let's switch stances again. If I switch to that, or if I slip to the outside, boom. Okay, I'm much safer from like all of the other attacks that Elias has to offer. When I'm on the inside here, all of like his knees, his kicks, his right hand, all of that stuff has a potential to hit me. But when I go to the outside, it's much harder to counter like this. Uh, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes. Because if they throw a jab and they're not super connected to the floor and they just want to bail, it's a major easy bail to exit that way. Opposed to, let's switch your stance again. If I slip to the inside here, his bail, does it, he doesn't get to just like move this way and be able to bail out. Which makes it so that I can counter a lot easier when, when I slip to the inside, okay? So, he would slip to the inside, boom. He's connected here, punches on the inside of his guard. Occasionally we go to the outside, like cracks cost a, a lot of times with like some really clean shots. Super phenomenal fighting. I loved it. Slipping to the inside is a really good idea. Uh, what was the other thing we were gonna talk about in this breakdown? The calf kicks, okay? Let's talk about the calf kicks real quick. Again, another space deal that you have to deal with. You don't get to like, uh, I wanna say, uh, I never like saying don't, but if Elias goes to kick my calf, go ahead, boom. And even if I check it, go ahead. That still sucks, like it still sucks. Just like how the wheel kick, if he kicks me with the wheel kick and I block this, it still might suck, okay? But when someone's kicking your calf, it's typically because you're not in a position with your body and maybe not like aesthetically, but with your weight where you can't get yourself out of the way. Okay, it's like a, it's a really subtle positional mistake that you're making. So when Elias is just constantly kicking my calf, it means that I don't have access to all 360 degrees that I need to have with my feet. And that means that it's bad position. Okay, I know that that's getting into the weeds a little bit, but that's bad position. So when Elias goes to kick my calf, if I can't get myself out of the way or like make it miss or like really turn it, I'm doing a mistake somewhere, okay? I approach the calf kicks just like how I would approach a wheel kick. Make space, space is always like your answer to fully safe answer, okay? When Elias goes to kick my calf, I take my step back, okay? Boom, I take my step back. That's honestly the most, uh, most reliable way to defend these, okay? Another little rant thing that I'll go on with the calf kick is if me and Elias are fighting each other and he kicks my calf, 
I don't start addressing this when my, stat, when my calf starts hurting, okay? He kicks me again. I'm like, okay, that's two. This is a 15 minute fight. I need to do something about this before the swelling actually happens, starts bumping nerves and all of that stuff in there, and then I need to address it. You eat one or two calf kicks, it's time to make a change. You need to start focusing on making that correction earlier because you're not going to notice it until it's too late and then you're gonna and then you're just fighting at a major deficit it's not any good okay so those are things with that fight guys I love that fight to me that was the fight of the night I know that the Ilya Teporia fight was uh, was a really awesome fight too but uh, for me Rob Whitaker's skills are just like so unmatched the way that he throws the, his punches tight unloaded and that the way that he threads the needle inside of people's guards is just absolutely phenomenal so good on Whitaker dude it was such a blessing honestly and an honor to like even watch you in person do that so uh yeah thanks like and subscribe peace